Hi, I'm, I'm Matt Ennis. I'm the athletic director here at, at SCF. And uh, this is a, a special night for us. Um, and uh, we'll have a few introductions. We'll, we'll have an uh, invocation, and then we'll kind of dive into the meal. We'll break up for a little while and then come back and, and do the uh, inductions themselves. So uh, I want to just, just take a moment and, and, and just uh, say a few words. Uh, as we welcome the class of, of 2014 into the Hall of Fame, we not only celebrate Ryan and Tom and their personal accomplishments, but we re reflect upon our, our rich history and, uh, and what we've accomplished at the State College of Florida. From our humble beginnings in 1957 as Manatee Junior College, we've grown and evolved uh, to the State College of Florida. And many things have changed, but one thing has remained. It's the tradition of excellence. Uh, and there, there's no question that carries on. And that, that's why we want to make sure that our current student athletes have a chance to participate in this event um, so they know why, why we do what we do because of uh, the standard that's been set forward. So as we go through the night, we'll, we'll experience some of those, those great uh, moments in our history. We'll experience some of those great emotions and relationships that this is really all about. Um, to welcome us, uh, I'd like to invite Dr. Donald R. Bowman, the Vice President of Student Affairs, to the stage. Uh, Dr. Protzfield was uh, unable to, to be with us, um, and Dr. Bowman has graciously stepped in in, in her stead. Uh, Dr. Bowman is, uh, is <clears throat> not only my boss, um, but he's, he's uh, de devoted over 30 years uh, to the collaborative leadership and learning experience uh, and uh, has served as a college recruiter, a counselor, uh, enrollment manager, and administrator. He's, he's experienced the entire uh, experience that a student uh, will go through. Uh, he's, he's a blessing to have uh, with our program, and uh, with no further ado, Dr. Bowman. Well, thank you very much. I know Dr. Pa Dr. Pappas, of course, was also um, hoping to be here tonight, as was Dr. Carol Probstfeld. Um, I think last night, Dr. Probstfeld was on stage with three politicians and a representative from the Herald Tribune. And I'm not sure if the fact that she was on stage with three politicians and the major discussion was around the choice of marijuana as a medical opportunity in the future may have put her under the weather today. <laughs> um, not really sure. But uh, unfortunately, she did come down with the flu today, and she has a high fever, and she was so looking forward to tonight. So I do want to make sure that I uh, give all of you her greetings, because she wanted very much to be here th this evening. Uh, for us this evening, I know she wanted to uh, be here so that she could go around to each of the individual tables and recognize all of the special individuals who have been here and made this program so special. And as I look around, uh, whether it's our current athletes or it's those who've been with the program for so many years, every absolute one of you are very special to this particular program. So it'd be very hard for us to go around and say something to each one of you because each of you have played a major part in making this program the outstanding best practice program that we have here. And I thank each of you for that. But I would be remiss if I did not move forward and really recognize the what I would call Mr. Reverend Honorable Coach Bob Wynn. He fits all of those particular areas. We, we've done a, a major background check on you, Bob, but uh, about all I could come up with is that in you, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Well, when I, I'll talk, I'll come over and talk in your ear if a minute, you'll be watching me. But what we, um, what we, and this doesn't work that well, I think, right? On now? You hear me now? 
That's the first time my wife would say that I could not be heard uh, over any microphone, so that's good. But we are so proud of the fact that you could be with us here tonight and honored, because if I remember correctly, you came here in about 1959, 8, 1958. And he was original faculty, and under Dr. Neal, it was because of all the efforts that the coach, Mr. Honorable Reverend Bob, was able to do is that he, with his efforts, was able to move forward and was able to actually, I think if I remember correctly, you've told me you actually organized the conference and the Florida uh, Community College Activities Association was actually born under your guidance and Dr. Neal's. So I think we have nothing but the opportunity tonight to recognize the foundation from where we have all been able to move forward. And again, I'd like to recognize Coach for being here. Well, unique to some programs, but definitely ours, is some of you have played for MJCC, some of you have played for MCC, and now some of you are playing for SCF. And what you're going to find is that in the future, we're going to recognize and be proud of absolutely every name that we've had, because through all of those names, the intercollegiate athletic program has always been the best. It has tied the community together. And no matter what our name, our intercollegiate athletic program has always been at the core of the institution values for our student athletes. And again, I go back to the foundation um, of Coach Wynn and to those of you who have participated, whether it has been as a coach, as an athletic director, or to players. You have made the intercollegiate athletic program what it is, regardless of what the college name has been. And for that, each of you should be applauded. Tonight, I'd really like to applaud uh, both um, the uh, individuals who are coming in for our Hall of Fame, as well as all of you who have been honored in the past. For us, it's a turning the corner tonight in that we're looking forward to making sure that as we go forward, we have this as a best practice. We have this as the intercollegiate athletic program in the state. And again, because of the honorees, because of the coaches and the athletes, you make this a very, very special place to be. Thank you, and welcome, and enjoy yourselves tonight. I always wondered where the term skip came from. I now know it's a lot shorter than all the other titles together. So uh, thank you. <laughs> um, at this time, I'd like to invite uh, Melinda Zerzicki to the uh, the podium. She is a chaplain with Fellowship of Christian Athletes and will provide us with our invocation. Good evening. Thank you. Um, it's always a privilege to serve as the chaplain for sports at SCF and I'm honored to be here with you this evening. Um, it, uh, to start, it's just, it's called to be thankful. Be thankful that you don't already have everything you desire. If you did, what would there be to look forward to? Be thankful when you don't know something, for it gives you an opportunity to learn. Be thankful for the difficult times. During those times, you grow. Be thankful for your limitations, because they give you an opportunity for improvement. Be thankful for each new challenge, because it will build your strength and character. Be thankful for your mistakes. They will teach you valuable lessons. Be thankful when you're tired and weary because it means you've made a difference. It's easy to be thankful for the good things. A life of rich fulfillment comes to those who are also thankful for their setbacks. Gratitude can turn a negative into a positive. Find a way to be grateful for all your troubles, your sorrows, and count your blessings. At this time, we're going to bow our heads. Uh, thank you for this evening and thank you for this time of fellowship and we're honored to be here uh, with your presence. Thank you for the nourishment to our body. All in your name. Amen. Now we have some special guests with us, uh, some members of the Hall of Fame, and uh, I'd like to ask them to the stand as they're called and if you would just uh, hold your applause until we, we get all of them up. 
um, and we can recognize all of them. Uh, a man who needs no introduction, uh, uh, Skip Wynn, uh, Harry Canan, Mr. George Sanders, Nick Cafaro, John O'Connor, Pat Osborne, Mr. David Motes, Meredith Headings. It's always wonderful to, to have uh, Hall of Famers at the event. Um, it really pays tribute to uh, what, what this event is, is actually about. And uh, I think the vision that, that our, uh, uh, one of our inductees uh, had. So I appreciate you all coming for sure. I'd like to also recognize our, our coaches that are with us. Uh, Coach Tim Hill II, Coach Hill, baseball. One of our newbies, Coach Elliot Washington with basketball and an alum of the program. It's all Harry's fault that he's here. He got it started. Uh, coach and Hall of Famer Meredith Headings for softball. And representing the tennis team, the assistant coach Stephen Moros. And our, our other new kid on the block, Mr. La Dr. Lonnie Wilson. <laughs> Nearly messed that one up. Uh, we'll have a few more recognitions as the, uh, the night goes on, but this is, this is about two individuals um, and, and their individual accomplishments and, and how they brought prestige to this institution. Um, I'd like to bring uh, Mr. George Sanders uh, to the stage. And, and those of you that know George know that this is an important night because he's not wearing shorts. The tie... <laughs> Not as, not as special, but the fact that he doesn't have shorts on tells us something big's going on. Uh, George, a Hall of Famer and uh, someone who I consider as a mentor, uh, former athletic director and athletic trainer, and probably the reason why my daughter's named Abigail Grace, because it's a, something that my athletic trainers do, because his daughter's named Abigail Grace. So, <laughs> no further ado. Are we supposed to read his bio or not? I don't think he needs a microphone. What do you want to do? No, I'm just telling you. Is the bio in a program somewhere or not? Yes, it is. So they've seen it? Yes. Okay. All right. I, I have the honor tonight to be here, first of all, as f the former athletic director. And Coach Wynn hired me as the equipment clerk and the athletic trainer in 1987. Uh, one week out of college, uh, or grad school, excuse me. I was out of grad school at that point. Did have a second degree at that point. But the opportunity to come and be a part of a program that I knew very little about uh, at the time uh, was exciting one because I needed a job and my mom said I needed a job uh, but second because of the history that in the little bit of conversation I'd had with him and asking people about what have you heard of uh, MJC MCC at the time uh, nothing but positive uh, and then you see the accolades and the history of the place when you got here and you're like wow I'm part of something special uh, I've always considered myself to be part of something special, and that's the people who have been here before me, the people who have given us this night and this opportunity. Um, and to be included in the Hall of Fame is something that I certainly don't think I deserved at the time that I went in with the legends that I went in with, Coach Wynn being the first one, Hal Chasey, who the gymnasium's named after, Dr. Neal, who was the founding president, Tim Hill Sr., Coach Canaan, Wayne Stelfox and Sandy Holloman, who had been the coaches when I started here in 1987, uh, helping to establish that program, or this program, excuse me, uh, into what it is today that the students that are here get the opportunity to be a part of, and all of you all have been a part of in some way, form, or fashion. So to be able to be here tonight in front of you all again is a huge honor to me to think back and think of where my history is, uh, as I said, in 2006. When I got inducted, I will always be a Lancer wherever I'm at. Although you're not Lancers anymore, I'm still a Lancer. I'm still a MJC, MCC, SCF person, uh, although I work for the competition. Uh, but this, this place will always be special to me. All of you all will always be special because of the efforts of people like Bob Wynn, 
Dr. Korchak, Mr. Chasey, Dr. Neal, the coaches who we've introduced, and all of you all that have been part of it. To be able to come back and to be part of the alumni weekend is very special also to see the faces from the past who have set the, the parameters and the, the milestones and the, the bar for what you all as student athletes want to represent and want to achieve. Uh, they're in this room. You get to see them. That's a huge thing, and I think that's one of the best things about being the size you are in a community of the size you are, because I'm in a large community now, and I never see anything except negatives about my school in the paper. Never. If something bad happens, we're in the paper. Everything here can be in the newspaper if positive. The ink you get from the Bradenton Herald, the Sarasota Herald Tribune, your athletics, box scores, whatever, good, bad, it's there. The community has an opportunity to see it. That's huge. That's what makes this place special, along with the people that are in this room right now. So I get the opportunity tonight to recognize one of the inductees. I've known Ryan Moore since 1987 as, I believe, a high school junior, if I'm not mistaken. Again, that was a long time ago. Um, <laughs> Uh, then I've, obviously I got the opportunity to get to know Ryan better at two years here as an athlete, to get to know his family. I have a picture in my office that his mother took in 1991 at Grand Junction with the uh, Colorado National Monument behind me. Uh, and as she said, you need to get away from the edge. But uh, as, as the people who know me, being near the edge is something I've always tried to do, uh, good, bad, or indifferent. Uh, and so that's a great thing. Like I said, I first met Ryan in 1987. He came here two years. He followed up a, a career at Central Florida, uh, excuse me, the University of Central Florida, and came back to Bradenton to become a successful businessman. That opportunity, again, as I'm not going to say anything about Ryan from story-wise, because he may know a few on me, and we need to keep that door closed. <laughs> this night's about Ryan and Tom Cook and not George. Um, I may have to get glasses out in a minute to read what I wrote or get a longer arm. I'm not sure which one will work better. Uh, we'll, go with, we'll go with the glasses. I'm old now. At least that's what my wife says. Okay. And it says that Ryan has not only been an incredible friend to the college, the athletic department, and to me personally, but that friendship and the stewardship to the college is why we're here to recognize him tonight. During my tenure as Director of Athletics, Ryan was instrumental in a number of fundraising initiatives. He spearheaded the actual first alumni scholarship campaign, which raised over $15,000 for the foundation. He also stepped up as one of the local businesses to sponsor the scoreboard that's currently at Winfield. And most of all, he helped this event happen every year because he was behind the first Hall of Fame as a conversation between he and I, and then as a sponsor of the first event in 2006 at the Braden and Country Club, and, and, and financially to help support that event. This event got started out of a conversation with Ryan over lunch, or maybe a beer, <laughs> and it, as a way to recognize the achievements and commitments of those who had come before us and built this tradition into what it is today. His persistence, dedication, loyalty, and generosity have helped establish this ceremony as an annual highlight to the MJC, MCC, SCF athletic family. It is my pleasure to introduce Ryan Moore, friend of the program and alumni, as a member of the 2014 class of the MJC, MCC, SCF Athletic Hall of Fame. I'll be happy to. Stay here for pictures, please. Take my sticks off. I'm going to slide over here for pictures. Cry. Well, I hope so. Congratulations, <laughs> man. Thanks, I appreciate Thank you very it. much. Thanks oh, you're me. welcome. Thank Congratulations, pal. Slide over here, man. I appreciate it. I'm supposed to have a picture I'm taking oh, first. Ryan in the middle. Ryan in the middle. Excuse me. Whew. Uh, feel like an Oreo? <laughs> no. <laughs> Rose between some thorns? No. I think you got us. <laughs> Get out my novel here.
George, I really appreciate those kind words. Um, <clears throat> George and I go back a long ways, and um, we spent many nights uh, or many times at the wing house together, <laughs> and uh, those were some fun times. If you ever see George eat wings, it's such a treat. <laughs> Just glad he didn't bring his towel with him tonight. No, we've, uh, we've had some great, great times. It's, I talked to some former Hall of Fame members and some, some, some familiar, or similar faces, and I, they said, you're going to stumble over your words, you're going to stumble over your feet, you're not going to know what to say, you don't know what they're going to do, and they're right. I had this whole thing planned out. It didn't work out at all. Um, but um, I'm very humbled and honored to be here tonight. Um, I also, like George, am very undeserving of this sort of recognition or award. Um, don't hold any records, or I think I think I do maybe hit Timmy Hill the most. Um, <laughs> maybe hold that record. Um, but uh, but I was very fortunate to um, live in Bradenton, grow up in Bradenton, and uh, got the opportunity to come to Manatee Junior College at a very young age. But uh, first and foremost, I like to. Uh, First of all, give glory to God. He's the reason why we're here. He, he's done amazing things in my life. <clears throat> I'd like to thank my family. First, my wife, Chandra, and my son, Colin, and my other son, Payne. They, uh, they're special. They uh, make me a better man every day. They're the, the real winners tonight, not me. They put up with me very much. <laughs> I'd like to thank everybody else for being here. Um, there's two very special people in this room um, that I'd like to thank this award for very greatly. And that is my mom and my dad. Um, the countless hours of driving to each baseball game over the many years, and the countless trips to the laundromat to make sure baseball uniforms were clean and white for the next doubleheader or the next game. Um, the many sacrifices that my family made so I could live out my dream of playing the game of baseball. Um, they were my biggest fans. They instituted hard work and determination in everything we did as a family and installed that in a very young age and um, appreciate that because that prepared me for the road ahead. I'm eternally grateful for such committed loving parents and uh, they are the best and thank you for an amazing journey. It's been a sweet ride. There are, other, there are two other special men. One can't be here with us tonight, but he did contact me today via phone. Um, the, but the other man in the crowd is in the crowd who, again, I would um, like to thank for this award um, because I crafted my whole baseball world around this guy. <clears throat> One man who taught me many things. Most importantly, he led me to Christ at a very young age. He led me to the world of baseball, and I know that God has a special plan for everyone in everybody's life. There is no doubt that this person was a baseball angel from heaven above to put in front of me to learn from. He gave me my first baseball glove, spent precious time with me in the front yard teaching me how to catch ground ball, how to throw, how to hit. He came to many of my baseball games through the years and uh, was there for much, much more. But the one introduction that he did for me was introduce me to MJC baseball. For those who don't know, I started out this program as a bat boy at a very young age with my lifelong friends Timmy Hill and Ronnie Wen. Oh man, those are some good memories. <laughs> but that's where the dream started for me, it was right there. You know, it was there that, you know, as a little boy that I felt I was among heroes, superstars. Baseball superstars where I felt accepted as a real member of a team. But keep in mind, it wasn't any other team. It was the MJC baseball team and many championships later. I can remember the best part of being the bat boy was skipping school because we seemed to always go to the state tournament every year. <laughs> and I always looked forward to that week because of that and the many uh, wiffle ball whippings I gave Timmy Hill. Um, the Wins, the Moors, and the Hills would always camp. We'd go to the state tournament every year and have our campers, and uh, that was such a, a wild time, fun time. But it was there at the state championship. Um, I can't remember the year, Coach, when you'd have to help me out. But um, I got to experience our first charge on the field as baseball state champions when I was just a bat boy here at MJC. And I can remember guys protecting me and holding me back and make sure I didn't get clobbered and cleated and all that stuff. And so. Little did I know I would experience that feeling once again down the road. 
I've established many friendships along the way. Um, I encountered a whole lot, but I can still remember chasing Glenn Davis's home run baseballs through the pine trees and through the streets and into the night, and then coming back in with the baseball to give back to him and him saying, thanks a lot, man, you can have it. As a little kid with starry eyes looking up at Glenn Davis, he just gave you his home run ball. You couldn't ask for any more than that. Guys like Jody Reed, Bobby Holzma, Rich Savur, Mickey Atherton, John Floyd, Jody Fernandez, Eddie Ponte, Steve Curry, Alex Cole, Barry Bass, and the list goes on and on and on. But those were my heroes growing up because I was a member of the greatest baseball team in the world within my eyes. I can remember the countless times I had to change my clothes from boys club baseball games to get to, to, get to MJC, uh, wearing my bat boy uniform, running a dugout late that uh, couldn't, wait to, couldn't wait to get there. Those moments were very priceless. So tonight, like so many here, I have been touched by this special man. I probably more than others in this room. This man is the cornerstone of SCF Athletics, but he's also my personal baseball angel and friend for life, Coach Bob Wynn. <laughs> he makes a pretty good hamburger, too. <laughs> the other special man who can't be with us tonight, who God put in my life, was Coach Tim Hill. I was first inter introduced to Coach, Coach Hill when he was assistant for Coach Wynn at MJC. And let me tell you that this man is a man of character, principle, and full of integrity, both on and off the baseball field. The list of achievements he has accomplished is second to none in the entire country. I played high school for a very small baseball program here in the community called Braden Christian School. We barely had enough guys to field a team. And I can assure you there was no recruiting going on in those days. <laughs> you were on your own. But after getting the call from Coach Hill, to come to MCC to get a chance to play at the very same baseball program that I had been bat boy for was an absolute dream come true. I felt very honored because it is very rare to get the opportunity to play college baseball again after high school. And to play for your local college, that's pretty special. It is MCC where I discovered myself as a player and a pitcher. I grew up in so many ways as an athlete and as a young man, and I contribute it all to Coach Hill. He gave me the opportunity to succeed and experience success I had never thought would happen, just dream of. I will always be grateful for him. He gave me the opportunity to play in the, some of the best memories that any baseball player can ask for. A state championship, a regional championship, a JUCO World Series appearance, where in 1991 we were national runners up. And of course, my personal opinion that that's the best MCC team that ever played. <laughs> but the memories and friendships acquired there were so amazing. I'm proud and honored that I got the opportunity to play for Coach Hill and be mentored by him. He was such and still is a shining example of what a player and a man should be like. Thank you, Coach Hill, for all that you do and all that you stand for and the countless lives you have touched in so many ways. But I know he can't be here tonight, but I'm still going to applause him. I'm here tonight to talk about what the Hall of Fame means to me and this institution. In the beginning, it was just a vision, along with just a select few, which after long dedication and commitment, that vision became a reality. I can tell you at the time, our visions for the athletic department were not always welcomed by some. In fact, I will say that after meeting with, at the time, the president of the college, to share these concepts and visions, that that particular, said to, that particular person said to me, and I quote, the athlete or person will not give back to the two-year institution they only remember what the four-year college did for them and will give to that, unquote. Well, that statement has proven dramatically wrong, and look where we have come today. The Hall of Fame is just not an elite fraternity that remembers the past, the present, and future champions, but it's about the history, the dedication, the support of all people, including student athletes, coaches, and administration supporters, and remembering where our roots are from. We have seen many changes here at the college, but no matter what the changes, it is still our way of life. We have come to expect year in, year out, excellence in the classroom, excellence on the field or the court of play. We admire the history and dedication of its founding fathers, our commitment, our commitment in coaching and bringing each student athlete the best 
that we can offer. For the history and the tradition at this college is rich, very rich, but the legacy continues. There is much more to do and much more to come. If you just take a look at our facilities the last 10 years, you'll be amazed by what has happened with that commitment. And so tonight I'd like to encourage you, whether you are a friend, a player, coach, or spectator, to support our continued efforts here at this institution and assist these student athletes, present and future, to assure them that this legacy and the tradition will continue to be strong and provide our way of life here at SCF, which is called success. I hope that this event and its memories will serve as witness to all the tremendous achievements that have taken place here and its people, its athletes, but most of all its tradition and values that will stand the test of time. Dreams are born here at SCF. I'm living proof. Dreams are fulfilled here at SCF. I'm living proof. Remember SCF, all that it does, all that it did, and all it has done for you. God bless you and thank you for this undeserving, awesome award. Forget that. Uh, you learned it, buddy. <laughs> I think that that gives you a little glimpse into the passion uh, behind the man that uh, that uh, helped to get this event going and do so many wonderful things uh, for this college. It's not just something that he believes in; it's something he lives. And uh, personally, uh, when I was in the new kid on the block as the athletic director, uh, that guy embraced me right away and uh, was nothing but supportive. So I, I really uh, carry him in a, a great level of esteem. So uh, congratulations, Ryan. Uh, very deserving. He kind of mentioned uh, a common thread that I think we've heard throughout this, uh, this entire ceremony, uh, and that, that's one gentleman, Skip Wynn. Um, I don't think he needs any further introduction. I'd like to ask him to, to join me up here. Um, and he has a few words about Ryan and then uh, has some words, of course, that he's earned to, to share with, uh, with us about Tom Cook. Skip? Stage is yours, sir. Good, good, good. Thank you, Matt. I did not make any notes. Uh, I did a lot of thinking and a lot of praying and a lot of thinking. Uh, so I'm just kind of going to ramble with you a little bit tonight. I won't promise you I won't get long-winded. <laughs> because, you know, you can look back on this many years and do a lot of rambling. Good rambling. Uh, just before I get to talking about the man I'm here to talk about, uh, I want to tell you a couple of quick stories about Ryan. Uh, I won't say anything else about his accomplishments because that's what we've been talking about, and, and you never would finish it anyway. But anyway, as Ryan was growing up, well, uh, I knew him from the time he was a baby. His family and me and my family were just as much a part of each other's families as you could be. Like every once in a while now, let, now, before I say this, let me remind you, the only foreign language I speak is Georgian, okay? <laughs> so if I don't speak correctly, I've got an English teacher daughter over there that will give it to me when I get home, okay? <laughs> so uh, what I started to say is Dwayne and I are about as close as, as to brothers as people can be when you ain't, Okay? <laughs> So that's the background. That's, that's my connection with Ryan. He's called me Uncle Bob, I think, since he started to walk in. Uh, I'll just tell you a couple of quick stories and then get on. <laughs> One thing, I don't know, Ryan must have been five or six. Uh, we were playing at the college there. And, of course, I coached third base when, you know, when we were on offense. And I was coaching third base, and Ryan would come. <laughs> he, he'd come to the fence and – kind of shake on the fence and you say Uncle Bob Uncle Bob Uncle Bob and I'd kind of acknowledge him you know in some way uh, and finally Dwayne came over there to him and said to him <laughs> said Ryan leave Uncle Bob alone he's working <laughs> Ryan said he's not doing anything he's just standing there <laughs> boy I'm glad I'm glad he that the people who evaluated me and my job wasn't there when I heard that <laughs> but I'm telling you no, it could have been no better truth than that. Many, many times I've been standing on that third base line thinking, boy, you got the best job in the world. 
And I thank God for that every day. The other thing, uh, and Ryan spoke to this a little bit, we, uh, when uh, Dwayne and, and, and Margaret's daughter and my daughter, one of my daughters, were, we went to West Braden Baptist Church, and they had a summer camp out at the Boy Scout camp every summer. Uh, and this one time, Brother Bob Allen, who was our pastor at that time, uh, would would talk to him, you know, and then so it come down to I think it was maybe Thursday night or something like that. But when Brother Bob opened the uh, opened it up for somebody to come forward and accept Christ, uh, Ryan, I, I didn't even know where he was, <laughs> and all of a sudden I felt something pulling on on my pants leg like this, and I looked at him and Ryan saying, "Uncle Bob, Uncle Bob," and I said, "What do you want?" He said, "I want to go forward." And I said, really? You want to go forward? You know what you're doing? He said, yes, sir, absolutely. And Margaret was standing like right here. And I, I looked at her and she said, yeah, it's okay, go ahead. So one of the greatest day, greatest times of my life was when I walked him to that altar. And folks, he's never looked back. He's never looked back. He, he's, he walks a Christian walk every time he takes a step. And I thank God for that every day. So, okay, now I'll do what I'm up here to do. <laughs> All right, as I said, I didn't make any notes. I'll just ramble with you for a little while. Uh, Tom Cook, looking back at him now, I probably still will refer to him as Tommy because I always did. Uh -huh. But uh, in looking back now, I realize, and I say this without hesitation, Tommy Cook was the best catcher that has ever been through this program. I've seen them all, folks. I've seen them all. Uh, at the time I was coaching him, I, I, I realized, you know, what, what a contribution he made to the, to the team and all that. And I won't say anything about his stats. Y'all have heard what he made All-American here, and he was about as good as a guy can be. Then he went on to Florida State and did the same thing there. But what, what I started to say about just now, in looking back at Tom, I don't know whether he even realized this or not, but he was one of the best leaders that I've ever been exposed to. Uh, and I don't know whether he even realized he was leading or not, but he was totally committed to what he was doing as an individual. Uh, and when and he just the way he approached practice, the way he approached ball games and whatever, he just exuded le leadership. And everybody around him rallied around him. I don't know whether he was aware of that or what. But uh, that's one of the best, one of the greatest qualities that I saw in him, and I love him like I did then. Uh, Tommy, at the time he was here, let me see, how will I say this? The baseball program, and not just the baseball program, but the entire athletic program and the college itself. We were in what I would call a survival mode. <laughs> For, from, from every point of view, academic point of view, financial point of view, and whatever. So we, we, we were kind of in a, a uh, uh, like I said, survival mode. Uh, when we went to practice every day, we lived that day because no, no telling what tomorrow would come. Now, uh, this was my feeling, and I'm sure everybody, and, and even at the college, we were growing every day we were growing every day in every department that there was see i was on the original faculty and i saw it grow from day one uh and we were growing every day we were challenged to to do these things that nobody a lot of people didn't have the opportunity to do we felt very very uh special to have been for, for god to have seen the uh, purpose in us out of that original faculty coming there to get on that ground floor to help establish and build the community college system, what it was called a junior college system then, uh, from the ground up. And, and it was kind of, you know, scary and spooky and whatever, but we were challenged and we accepted that challenge. It wasn't something we ran from or made excuses for or whatever. Uh, we, and I'm speaking to we about we as the entire college family, not just me and those who are surrounding me. Uh, and as I look back on that, I know that God had that purpose in mind when He sent me here. 
was to help this the growing of the community college system and I feel very good about that. Right now I just happen to think about this Dr. Bowman. Uh, challenge Dr. Bowman a little bit. Is that all right Don you accept the challenge? Okay all right well as Matt mentioned a while ago uh, what is now, well, I don't know what they call it, I don't know what, what George can tell me, but I don't know what to call it now, but it's a Florida Community College Activities Association. That is the governing, promoting uh, body of that, that, that governs and promotes and, and regulates and everything, all ex, not just athletics, but all extra, extracurricular activities in the community college system. The... the uh, idea for that came in Dr. Neal's office upstairs in his office not very long after I got here. Dr. Neal was a great man. You could go in and talk to him just like I'm talking to you right now and he respected you and, and you know kind of took the jitters away from you. You knew when you walked in there man I got a good boss. <laughs> okay I hope some of you have experienced that same thing. But anyway Dr. Neal said to me he said Bob what, what, what do you think are some of the things that we have to do in order to establish an athletic program here. And I said, top flight, my top choice is that we have to come up with an athletic association of some kind to set standards and, and to regulate and, and whatever uh, what we do in order to put everybody playing on the same level playing field and knowing where you're going and not so the cheaters couldn't cheat if they did they accused us of cheating uh but i i, I told him that and i said uh said to him to me that's one of the first things we ought to do well see he didn't even let me get to point number two <laughs> he said okay what do we got to do and i said all right we what i think what we should do is to get together the community colleges that are in operation in Florida now. And we, Manatee Junior College, host a meeting here on our campus to kick this thing off. He said, all right, uh, can you come up with something in writing to, to have to kick it off with? I said, yeah, what I'll do, yes, sir. I didn't dare say, yeah. <laughs> yes, sir, that wouldn't be Georgian, would it? Uh, I said to him, yes, I, I, I can. So I knew a number of the people around the country who were uh, working in similar jobs. So I called a guy that I knew at uh, a junior college in Mississippi. I don't even remember what the name of that college was now. But, uh, and I asked him about, you know, what they did. And he said, we just went through a similar situation. I'll send you a copy of the, comp of the Constitution that we just adopted. So he did. Boy, he bailed me out bad. <laughs> so anyway, I took that, when I got it, I took that thing and modified it a little bit. Uh, how I thought in my mind it could be better used and, and implemented by us here in the state of Florida. So I took that to Dr. Neal and he looked at it he said, this is great. I said, Dr. Neal, I can't take all the, all the credit for it. So, you know, Dr. Neal was a preacher. You couldn't lie to him. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, uh, so we set, we went right from that day and set up a meeting and, and Dr. Neal sent out formal invitations and all that stuff. Uh, to come here and let us talk about it. So we did. And that right there is where the birth of what today's uh, Florida Communities Activities Association, that was where it was conceived right there that day. So, Dr. Bowman, let us get credit for it. I'm not talking about me. Let this college get credit for it. Uh, George Sanders, you guys are still active in what you're doing. Uh, I've been trying to get this done for a long time. Steve Korchek made a good move on it, and then something happened along the way. But I would like to see it official. I, I mean, you know, like it ought to be. I'd like to see this college get the credit for, or be recognized. I don't like to say get the credit. That doesn't sound quite right. But be recognized as being the establisher and the starter of what is now so great. Uh, so I'd like to like for the association to come up with writing some kind of authentic history of the college. Now be careful when you talk to people because some of them are going to tell you different stories. 
I'd like to I'd like to edit some of those tours, Don. <laughs> okay. Uh, and, and and anyway, I, I just like to see this. Just like to see it. You know, go down in history. This college go down in history as being that kind of promotion because we were. Okay. Now a little bit getting back to Tommy. Tommy, I don't I don't mean to I don't mean to overlook you, but what I told you I was going to ramble, didn't I? Okay. <laughs> All right. In looking back at Tommy. And, and I mentioned a while ago that you, you, you could look at him in a minute and tell this guy's a special player. He's a special athlete. Tommy played football and, and baseball. I don't know whether he played basketball in high school or not, but he, on the baseball team, he was a pitcher and a catcher, not at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> not at the same time. That would be difficult, wouldn't it, Tommy? <laughs> but anyway, he was. And he hurt his back playing football. Uh, and gave him some trouble. Well, I didn't know about his back injury or anything until one day. Now, I'm an ex-catcher myself, so uh, I know where I'm coming from, all right? Catching batting practice is pure hell. That's right. It is. We enjoy it as catchers because that's where we do work on our fundamentals and make ourselves better. Uh, so one day, Tommy was supposed to, was supposed to hit but he came to me and he said, said, Coach, my back is hurting really bad when I hit, when I swing the bat, my back's hurting really bad. He said, if, you don't, if it's all right, I'd like to just get in there and catch batting practice because that didn't hurt his back, see? So he started right then and he caught more batting practice than he did anything else probably. And at that time, uh, he wasn't just killing time, he was working on his mechanics. I'm talking about mechanics of receiving and whatever, working on his mechanics, play it, feeling the ball in front of him, keeping the ground ball in the dirt, things like that. And then we got to the point where we would, uh, I'd put an infielder down at second base and Tommy would throw down to second base, not, not only, he wouldn't take pitches away from hitters, but he'd throw down to second base on the bad, on the bad uh, pitches. And so I say all that to say this, he just, uh, he was committed, totally committed to making himself the best catcher he could be and for making his ball club the best team we could be. The, uh, I think, as I said a minute ago, I think he just totally exuded leadership uh, because his people followed him. And that wasn't something that he was doing. He was not a holler guy. He wasn't somebody you see slapping somebody on the back and running up and down the road and yelling and all that kind of stuff. And you've heard set. He, he's, he, led, he led by example. He acts absolutely exemplifies that, that way, that kind of athlete that he was. Uh, I appreciated it then, but now the more and more I look back on it, I know what a valuable play he was. Uh, just to tell you a couple of other quick stories, and I, I, I'll quit rambling maybe. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, I think it was written up in the little program that we have there. We had, uh, we, we just had a, a scoreboard on the field there. See, to, it was run by hand and for, for several years. And uh, I went to Dr. Neal and I said, you know, I'd like for us to see if we can't get an electric scoreboard of some kind. She said, it doesn't have to be anything elaborate, just something that humans run and that, that, that does the work that, you know, humans don't have to do. Uh, so anyway, he, he and I, Dr. Neal knew somebody in the Coca-Cola body, by, in the Coca-Cola company here. So we got Coke to, to, to build us, uh, to, to, to get us a scoreboard, and it was nothing elaborate. It was just a whole lot better than what we had. <laughs> so we, we placed it. Now, if you'll notice, when you're on the field, our, the, the, uh, the, the scoreboard, not the one that's out now, the one that's right there is now is something else. If you hadn't seen it, you need to go by there and see it and then thank Ryan and George and those for it when you go by there. But anyway, uh, when we talked about location, the, the man that was putting in, the, that wanted to put in the, the, uh, the scoreboard wanted to put it over behind the left field, which is that's what people usually do. I mean, that's where the scoreboard is. But I said, no, it's too exposed to vandalism there. So let's put it over the right field fence. Well, you know, that, that goes totally against the 
principles of putting a scoreboard somewhere because if you put it on the right field side the way that that uh, that that uh, baseball fields are oriented to keep the sun out of the right fielders in the first baseman's eyes uh, that if you place it over the right field fence there's always a sun glare on it or something like that but anyway that's where we went ahead and put it that's why you'll see it on behind the right field today uh, so we finally got it up and on the first day that we played the first night that we played out there tommy hit a ball <laughs> off that scoreboard and it, it now that you understand now ladies and whatever came with you uh <laughs> excuse me excuse me kelly my goodness i'll get it when i get home uh okay uh anyway um uh, the scoreboard is positioned behind the fence, and of course, all you folks who know a little something about a baseball field know that this this is the way to do it anyway. It's it's placed behind the fence so that if the ball hits the scoreboard, it's a home run because it went over the fence, provided the, the scoreboard is in fair territory. So Tommy hit that thing on the first time, the first time up. Uh, then it has it, the next time it was hit. And I don't know about this, but this is only two times it was hit. Of course, it was hit a lot, you know, in batting practice and stuff like that. But the other time that it was hit, we had a boy named Reno Walton. Played first base and pitched a little bit. Went on and played for Florida Southern after he finished playing with us. Left-handed hitter, pretty good hitter. Uh, he came up, and we needed the runs. I don't remember the, you know, the complete details of it, but we needed the runs. And the bases were loaded. And Reno came up and hit a ball off of that scoreboard. Now, this is a grand slam home run, legit. This is a grand slam home run. Well, the base umpire called it a ground rule double. So that, 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 that grand slam home run goes in the records right now. And if you look back, I left all of the, the uh, school books of any game we ever played before I left. So I know if you look back in that, that will show Reno getting a double. He hit that ball out of the park. And a grand slam home run. How many opportunities does a guy get to hit a home run in his lifetime? I mean, a grand slam in his lifetime. So that tells the story of the scoreboard. Uh, well, part of it. And one other scoreboard opportunity. I was when Tom was playing with um, Kansas City Royals. They were what was it? Kansas City or uh, Oakland? Oakland Athletics. Yeah, at that time. Uh, I was in Birmingham, Alabama uh, on a scouting trip, and I went. To, somebody told me that, that, the, that the major league team was coming there to play the, the Birmingham Barons in an old Rick Woodfield out there, if any of you have, are familiar with that area. Uh, and so I, I, I remembered that Tom was with the, with the Birmingham team at that time. So anyway, at that game, now we, the other team had Reggie Jackson. Reggie Jackson, I think, was a rookie that year. Wasn't he, Tom? I think he was, yeah. But anyway, uh, Tommy hit a ball that night, not against the scoreboard, but totally over it. And this was in left, this scoreboard was placed in left center field. So I, I don't really know how to describe Tommy as a Hall of Fame member. I just know this, I welcome him wholeheartedly into the Hall of Fame. Tommy, thank you for being what you are. You made me a better man, I know that. God bless us, had not he, boy? Thank you. Coach Wynn, thank you very much. An awful lot of nice things.
<laughs> Before I get going, I wanted to congratulate Ryan for uh, his induction. Um, he's got to be pretty excited. I know I'm very excited. And uh, it's nice to have a young stud going in with me. <laughs> <laughs> feels, feels, feels good. Congratulations. Good job. I'm uh, ab uh, obviously very honored to be up here tonight. Um, it's, it was definitely unexpected, and I'm uh, hugely grateful. Um, like uh, many kids growing up in the uh, Sarasota area, uh, I was very fortunate to have a lot of good coaches, family, friends, to uh, get me going in the right direction. And because of that, I have a lot of people that I'm thankful to, thankful for. Um, obviously, at the top of the list is my family. Uh, my mom and dad, they were, uh, they were always there for me. Uh, they were like a rock. Um, they were there for support. They were always there for support. Uh, they were always there for encouragement. Um, they were always there to pick my butt up when I was acting like an idiot, which was a lot. Um, just to say thanks is it just it doesn't get it. Uh, I could sit up here and talk for two or three hours about what they've done. You know, they're the uh, they were the ultimate parents. Uh, Another guy that I've thought a lot of is Coach Ed Foster, uh, my baseball coach or high school coach in, uh, at uh, Sarasota High School. Uh, coach Foster, we learned a lot of baseball from him, uh, but what a wonderful gentleman he is. Uh, I still get to see him now and then at uh, Sarasota. Is this coming off over okay? Closer. Uh, I still get to see him now and then at uh, Sarasota events. Uh, he plays golf down at Bobby Jones, I know. Uh, he's staying active and uh, I'm very, very happy for him. When I was going to school down in Sarasota High School, I kept reading about, you know, my junior year, sophomore, senior, kept reading about this uh, junior college up here in Bradenton. Um, of course, they had this super coach, Coach Wynn. Uh, I know a lot of you call him Skip. For some reason, uh, he's always going to be Coach Wynn to me. Um, he had these, uh, he would bring in a lot of local talents, which I thought that was pretty neat because he'd bring in a lot of guys from the Venice, Bradenton, Sarasota, Tampa area. And, uh, and at that time, they had some very, they had some really good teams. So it didn't take me long to decide that this is where I wanted to go. And I don't remember if I called Coach Wynn or if Coach Wynn called me, but either way, this is, this is where I ended up. And I was very happy about it. By, both, by most standards, we had uh, two really good years at, uh, in 66 and 67. Uh, we won our we won our district, but they don't call it district, they call it the conference. We won our conference. We beat, uh, we beat up on pretty much everybody. I remember one thing that I was always felt good about is we played Florida State's freshman team and we played University of Florida's freshman team. And of course they thought they were hot stuff. And we beat them, three, it was three, three at home, three and away and we beat them 11 out of 12 games. And uh, for some reason, I always thought that was pretty neat. But then we went to the state tournament, and we did not too bad at the state tournament, but both years, we, we ran into Miami-Dade Junior College, and Miami-Dade Junior College just kicked our butts. They, uh, they were very good. Uh, they went on to the Junior College World Series. Uh, you know, they deserved it. You had to hand it to them. After a couple of years here, I was lucky to go up to Tallahassee and play at Florida State. 
Uh, Chuck, I think I hit the scoreboard at Florida State, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Didn't we? I think we hit it. I'd bring Chuck in because he was there. <laughs> That's a mistake. For me, to, for me to hit the ball to right field is a mistake. <laughs> Something went wrong. <laughs> But anyway, that was an, that's another top-notch school. Uh, we had a good year there, uh, and I was very fortunate to get uh, drafted by the uh, Oakland Athletics. Uh, if you remember Oakland Athletics, that was the team that had the weird colors, and Charlie Finley was the owner. And uh, anyway, I bounced around in the minor leagues four, four and a half years. Uh, played in Birmingham. Played in the Des Moines. Uh, in 1969, there was a song came out, and it was called "Stuck." I don't know if you all ever heard about it. It was called "Stuck in Lodi Again." <laughs> it was called "Stuck in Lodi Again," and that was in 1969. And that's exactly where I was. I was in the California League in uh, 1969 in uh, Lodi, California. It was uh, sort of unusual, but it was something that I remember. After about four and a half years of playing pro ball and the bus trips, it's a lot of work. Uh, I wouldn't uh, change it for anything. It was, uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, you, you, get, you make a lot of money. Um, a lot of you will relate. I think it was around $500 a month. <laughs> no, I'm serious. <laughs> and the best part was $4 and on the road you get $4.50 a day meal money. I, that, that goes a long way too. <laughs> so, so I thought I better get home. I better get home. It's time to uh, it, it's time to get into the real life. But without a doubt, my three years of college baseball, two here and one at Florida State, are is without a doubt the uh, most exciting baseball times of my, of my life. And uh, it's the camaraderie, the people, the coaches, uh, and it's just, it, was just, it was just a lot of fun. Back in November, Matt, Matt uh, our athletic director, Matt, Mr. Ennis, he called me and informed me of the Hall of Fame induction. And I was, uh, I was, you know, I was floored and very excited, very happy. And, um, and Matt says, Tom, uh, we need you to, you know, go through your old scrapbook because we need some pictures. I said, uh, for the, for the uh, brochure. And I said, I can, I can do that. So I go up in the attic and go through the stuff, and I had some nice 8 by 10 glossy pictures. Uh, our family was in, the, uh, was in the photo business, so that wasn't, that wasn't, that wasn't hard. <laughs> so I took it over to Matt, and I went into his office, and uh, he's got his, uh, the brochure was there, and it's a color brochure, and uh, I said, Matt, I'm sorry. I said, this is all I got. I said, I got these pictures, these black and white pictures, and I see you got the color, and Matt says, Tom, that's okay. That was a long time ago. We understand it. That's probably all you had was black and white. <laughs> I, I sort of pushed it a little bit there, Matt. He, he, he didn't exactly say that, but it was something like that. <laughs> I said, Matt, but Matt, we had electric scoreboard back then, remember? <laughs> Matt, I want to thank you very much for what you did for me the last couple months. I really do appreciate it. And I think that I th uh, I'm with everybody here. I think everybody thanks you for what you've done. You and your staff has done a great job. Not only uh, you had the golf tournament yesterday and you got this, the dinner tonight. Now tomorrow you got the other game. So you, you, guys, you guys have had your hand, hands full. So uh, great job, great job, thank you. To be part of this Hall of Fame team is, 
really, really exciting. But to me right now, the really exciting part is being able to look out there and see people that I've, I've admired all my life. Uh, I know Dr. Korchak is not here tonight. Um, he has always been, to me, uh, he's always been a great guy. Uh, he's always been my hero. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, if they were to have a Mount Rushmore for the State College of Florida, he'd be on it. Um, Mr. Uh, another guy that I love, and I was glad he came tonight. Uh, he comes from an Italian family in Sarasota. Uh, great Italian family, know the whole group. Uh, Nick Caffaro. Um He's gotta be the number one ambassador for the State College of Florida. He, uh, he'll probably be pitching tomorrow by pitching for the alumni, and I have no idea how he can do it. <laughs> Great job, Nick. <laughs> Meredith, Meredith, she's here someplace, I saw her. Hey, Meredith, what a, job, what a job she's done since taking over to State College of, uh, State College of Florida. Excuse me, I say Matthew Junior College, so I'm, if I'm getting mixed up back and forth, I'm sorry, because I'm trying to stay State College of Florida, but meanwhile, I. I'm still a Lancer and I'm still an MJC guy. <laughs> but anyway, Meredith, I've been watching you for the last few years, watching your team over there, and you have done such a fantastic job. You got those, you got those girls, you got those ladies really doing the job. And uh, if any of you have not got out and watched the girls, the ladies softball, you need to because they are exciting. They are fun to watch, and I don't know if I should say this, but sometimes they're a lot more fun to watch. There's a little more action than there is in watching the other guys. So anyway, great job, Merritt. My old, my old teammate, Motsi. My old, he was, uh, he came in uh, the second year. I was, uh, second year here. Uh, I was 67. And uh, Dave come down from Atlanta. Uh, he had all the tools. He could do, do everything. And run, he run like a deer. Um, he has a little trivia thing going that I don't know how many of you know, but uh, he played on that 1968 team which might have been one of the better teams that they ever had. I don't know. <laughs> now I look, now I look, the 91 team was, that, you guys must have been awful good too, I remember. But that 68 team, that 68 team was, they had a great team. Anyway, he played on that team, and they went to the Junior College World Series. Second place? Second place. And I think you guys said second place. I don't think we ever won it, did we? No, yeah. yeah. Always, that's okay. That's okay. Just getting there was. Is. But anyway, Dave went to the college world, uh, junior college world series in '68. Later, he joined Coach Hill, and they went to the. And I'm not sure which year that was. They went to the '94. They went to the junior college world series. And then his son, Robbie, went to the Junior College World Series. So he's been there three different, three different ways. And hopefully this year he'll be make his fourth. And to top that all off, he goes out, takes a break, goes out to Lakewood Ranch, and takes their team to the state tournament. out, And, and they win the state out. They're only state out there. So congratulations, Dave. I realize that the hall has has, uh, has chosen me, and I'm very flattered. Uh, but I have 
uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I had a lot of teammates that uh, a lot of teammates that I think should be standing up here with me. Uh, Walt Lampman, some of you heard, some of you maybe you haven't. Walt Lampman, Phil Caldwell, Chris Krebs, Tommy McKay, Bobby Dunn, Alan Boyce, Stan Bell. I could go on, there's a lot more. To me, they should be up here too with me. Um, Alan Boyce, you all have probably heard of him. Some of you maybe have used him. He's, uh, he's, a, he's a local orthopedic around here. So if, if, if you need a hip, that's the guy, he, he's, he's, he's the guy to go see. He's the guy to go see. So he's. The other guy that I wanted to bring up is Stan Bell. Stan Bell was the pitcher on our team. And as far as I'm concerned, he had the best stuff. He had electric stuff. Um, his ball would explode when it came to the plate. Um, he, he was uh, drafted out of here by the Atlanta Braves. He probably played a year or two in the Braves organization. And then he was called up to the big club. And if I'm not mistaken, Dave, he was killed tragically on a car wreck and I believe his wife was with him. They were both killed, I believe, uh, before he ever got to pitch in the big leagues. Um, if I'm right, Dave, I think I'm right. Am I right on all of It happened, he died on a Friday night. His, his first start was to be Saturday. Yeah, that's how sad it was, yeah. And this guy would have been, he's the kind of guy to me, he had a rubber arm. Uh, I know there's been a lot of great pitchers come through here. I think he would have pitched, he's the kind of guy to probably pitch 10, 15 years in the big leagues, and, and, and I, I wouldn't doubt he would have been an all-star. So I just had to bring that up because he was, uh, he was special. I got a couple old friends that came up here tonight, uh, old crony friends. <laughs> Sorry. And uh, I have to acknowledge them because I'm sure that they could have been doing some other things on a Friday night than coming up here watching me. Yeah, they could have been. <laughs> but uh, I got, <laughs> I got uh, Chuck and Marjorie and Jordan and Lexi and Mark and Wayne and Connie. And I, I thank you guys very much for coming up here because uh, Believe it, I needed his support, and uh, I th <laughs> you guys, thank you very much. Appreciate it. When you talk of uh, the State College of, Flor State College of Florida Baseball uh, over here on 26th Street, one name, one name pretty much personifies, uh, one name pretty much is synonymous with the game. Um, I remember when I used to drive up here, because I lived in Sarasota, so, and I'd drive up here early in the morning and I'd get here, and there'd always be this, I can't remember if it was green or blue, but it was a green or blue Jeep. It would always be parked right there at the front of the parking lot. And he was always there first, and he was always the last one to leave. He'd always be the first one there, and he'd always be the first, last one to leave. Um, if I'm not mistaken, this Jeep was the kind that if you were a quail hunter, that you would probably would want this Jeep. Um, I never looked, but there could have been, I wouldn't doubt there was probably a shotgun or two in the back. I don't, I don't know about that. There might, there might even been a bird dog. But Coach Wynn led by example. Uh, he was always there. When the words, uh, when you talk about Coach Wynn, excuse me, when you talk about Coach Wynn, the words discipline, accountability, loyalty, honor, they just roll off your tongue. Um, so 
So I really, really appreciate everything he did. Not only did we learn a lot of baseball during that period, but we learned a lot of life lessons. Um, Coach Wen, I uh, have enjoyed enjoyed the two years here so much, and I thank you, and I'll, I'm very, very proud to have played for you. Thank you. There's been a lot of great players come through here in the past, and a lot of them, of course, went on to be in the big leagues, and for you guys to honor me up here is just, is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, I don't know how to say it. It's just, uh, it, it's a great honor. And I thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. And if you ever need a, uh, I'm not looking to be your first team catcher, but hey, if you guys need a bullpen catcher, I'll be tickled to death to be there. <laughs> thank you very much. Thanks. You know, I think it's, I think it's one of the finest things that I get to do as the athletic director to make that phone call and notify folks that they've been chosen um, to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. I get called things like liar. I get told that I'm kidding. This is a joke, right? I believe that was what Ryan said to me. This is a joke, and then he said I was a liar. Um, <clears throat> and that's because these folks are so darn humble, a and. Uh, I don't know that they realize the prestige they brought to the institution through their their individual achievements, um, and we're very thankful for them. and uh, And I'd like to give them a round of applause again for Tom and Ryan. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank our uh, staff, uh, Melodia Wilson, uh, our staff assistant. Laura Stelzer, our athletic trainer, uh, Brian Newberry, and then again, Meredith Headings. Uh, their, their tireless effort put this, this all together and everything we do, and I just want to thank them. Thank you, guys. We have so much darn history and so much tradition. Um, I, I kind of want to make a call out there. Um, we have an open nomination process for our Hall of Fame. Um, we have a selection committee of 13 individuals. Um, but we have an open nomination, uh, and I would just ask that if, if there's somebody who made an impact that you're aware of, uh, that you really feel that, that, that deserves this honor, please nominate them. Um, and that information is all located on our, our website. And uh, if, if you can't find it there, uh, just give me a call, and I'll make sure you get it. Um, because uh, this, this Hall of Fame needs to live on, needs to move on, um, because it, it is about our past, but it's about our future. And uh, I just would ask you to do that. Along those lines, um, at your tables, if you have not yet, uh, there's a uh, card for the Manatee uh, Rundown. Uh, we're, we're trying to, to really share the amazing things that our student athletes do and, and, and our past um, and what we've done and where people are and, and get, keep folks connected. Um, I'll tell you the tradition lives on. Last year, all five of our teams went to the postseason. Um, first time since I've been around that that's happened. They also achieved a 3.2 GPA uh, in the classroom, and they graduated at a rate that's about twice that of the institution. Um, they're doing it on both sides, in, on the field, on the court, and uh, in the classroom. And so that tradition continues, and I would just hope that uh, y'all would consider uh, just getting that information. Um, I've been told to make the announcement that uh, you can feel free to take the flowers, not the candle thing, but the flowers with you. <laughs> Leave the candle thing. Uh, there's probably a fancy name for that, but I'm not good at that. Uh, candle thing. Um, feel free to take that. And the last, uh, the last thing I, I want to mention is that when we went through a transition to uh, State College of Florida, one of the things that happened with our Hall of Fame was that um, we would award our Hall of Famers a, a ring a, as a, a sign of their membership uh, to this, this very um, uh, important organization. And uh, 
with the, the support of many people like Ryan, uh, we're, we're bringing that back. And I think the, the picture's out there, and we're going to go back and, and take care of the classes that um, did not receive those rings. Um, and I think that ring embodies what this is all about. It ties together our entire tradition. Um, and I'm awfully excited uh, for that, and I thank everybody who, who helped to, uh, to bring that back. So with that, I just I thank you all for being here. Uh, I think this is one of the finest evenings that we have as an institution. And uh, I would like to thank IMG Golf um, for allowing us to be here. I think they provide a beautiful venue. I think we may have to start 30 minutes earlier so we can enjoy that sunset a little more uh, next year. But uh, it's just been a wonderful place. They took care of us with golf yesterday. And we'll go out to the ball fields and play some baseball and softball tomorrow and uh, just have a good time. Thank you all for being here. And congratulations to the, the two uh, inductees. Thank you. Hi, I'm here with uh, legendary coach um, Skip Bob Wynn. Mm -hmm. The field's named after him. We'd like to um, welcome everybody to this year's uh, 2014 SCF Athletics Hall of Fame. Coach Wynn, what does it mean to you to be able to return each year to a Hall of Fame like this for what you were at MJC, MCC, and now SCF. Meredith, God has been so good to me <laughs> that, you know, it's hard to say how I feel about it. I'm just, I know I've been so fortunate because I came on the original faculty and grew as a college grew. And during those periods of, of, of time, we were in kind of a self, uh, 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 what am I trying to say? Uh, Anyway, we, anyway, our growth was, was very interesting. Mm -hmm. And not, not just as, a, as athletics, but with the entire college. Because we were, you know, the ground floor of the community college system, which was exciting. Mm -hmm. And uh, as those years evolved, I was here for 35 years and did a lot of work, of course, with the uh, Florida Junior College Athletic Association. And That's right, you started it, correct? So you were part of that? I don't think, I don't know whether I answered your question or not, but that's I okay. rambled around. I'm that's good at rambling, and that's about all. <laughs> that's okay. Well, one of our inductees tonight is Ryan Moore, which I know you've known Ryan since he was young. I was wondering if when you heard that Ryan was going in tonight, um, if there's a, a funny story or a memory that popped in your head right away when you think about Ryan going in to the same Hall of Fame that you're in. Mm -hmm. Well, Ryan's family and my family are just like cousins but we're not okay. so all of ryan's life he has called me uncle bob so it's very close you know and as far as a funny story is concerned i was thinking about this on the way here a while ago uh ryan probably made as good assessment a good of an assessment of what i was doing and what my job was as anybody i know of when he was about five or six of course, I was coaching on the third baseline. We were at the ballpark, and he would come down to the wire there right behind us, and he'd holler through the fence, Uncle Bob, Uncle Bob, Uncle Bob, and I'd, you know, kind of give him a sign or something. But his daddy came over to him and said to him, Ryan, leave Uncle Bob alone. He's working, Ryan said. He's not doing anything. He's just standing there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. And of course, that, that's... Uh, this is not related to baseball, but one of the other memories of Ryan, very fond memories of Ryan's growing up, when he was about, I guess, seven or eight, uh, his older sister and my middle daughter were at a uh, church camp out near their house. And we would go down every night and, and you know, take part in the activities and whatever. And along toward the end of that church camp, uh, Brother Bob Allen, who was uh, our re our preacher, uh, opened the, the altar, you know, for anybody to come forward that wanted to accept Christ. They wanted to. Well, Ryan, I didn't even know where Ryan was, but I felt somebody something pulling on my pants leg like this and putting on this Ryan. I said, Ryan, what do you want? He said, I want to go forward. I said, are you sure? He said, yes, sir. And his mom was standing right there next to me. I said, Margot, what about that? She said, sure, take him on up there. So I did. Wow. And he did. He accepted Christ that night, and, and he knew what he was doing, and he's never looked back. Oh, that's great. That's, that's, that's a very fond memory. That's good. Uh, 
a lot of others, of course, as we as we were growing up. But I mean, as he was growing up, because like I said, his daddy and I are as close to brothers as you can be when you ain't. <laughs> so yeah, so so uh, I'm very proud of what Ryan has done and love him like he was my own. Thank you so much, Coach Wynn. I hope you have a great evening. Thank Thanks you. for your time. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank Hi, I'm Meredith Headings, State College of Florida um, Hall of Fame member, current head softball coach. We are here tonight at the 2014 SCF Athletics Hall of Fame induction ceremony. It's a very exciting night. I'm here with our current athletic director, Mr. Matt Ennis. Matt, I have a question for you. Sure. What can we expect tonight? Well, we're going to induct two great former uh, student athletes and, and we're actually going to have two Hall of Famers induct them which will be the first time that we've done that. Great. So it, it should be wonderful. Um, there's a lot going on this week with the homecoming weekend we have the golf tournament and then tonight's the Hall of Fame tomorrow we have baseball softball alumni games and then a, a big signing at softball. What makes tonight so special right in the middle of the whole homecoming um, lineup? It really ties everything together. You know, it, it's it's reflecting back on those that brought prestige to our program and, and student athletes and coaches and, and folks that really just made us who we are so we can really enjoy the, the three days together. Thank you, Matt. Clint, as the director of the foundation, what does having an event like this mean to SCF and the foundation? Well, I think the really important part of an event like this is that we get to uh, expose uh, new people as well as our alumni and, uh, and our friends, if you will, to the great quality students that we have and the wonderful things that the college is doing. You know, people want to give to successful programs. And I think this is an epitome, if you will, of, of how we demonstrate the success of the college. Um, have you ever been to an, um, an institution that has such tradition and, and such uh, a long list of, of incredibly talented people that have come out of, of their institution? Well, that's kind of a tricky question, yeah, if you will. And, and I'm not a graduate, but um, I, I'm very impressed with what I see. I was a volunteer before becoming the executive director here at the foundation. And, and I've, I, I believe in the community college system. I believe in the open um, enrollment aspect of it and that we give kids a chance to excel both academically and athletically. Um, and, and this is just, again, an opportunity for, to showcase what we can do for the community. Thank you so much. Sure. I'm here with um, fellow Hall of Famer, Mr. John O'Connor. John, you haven't missed many of these, and um, I'm sure you remember when you got the call that you were going into the Hall of Fame. So I was curious, what went through your mind, or what did it mean to you to find out that you would be in the MJC, MCC, SCF um, Athletics Hall of Fame? It meant a lot at the time because I looked at the people that had gotten in there and uh, I tell you the truth though, it's meant more since then because I'm looking at all the people that have been inducted since then and uh, you know every year is just, uh, I'm in awe because I know Tom Cook, he, Skip used to talk about him all the time about what a great player he was. As a matter of fact, he just told me uh, here that uh, Tom was a better catcher than I was when we played here. <laughs> Sounds like coach. So, uh, I'm glad to be back. <laughs> Um, so, uh, what are your, do you have any interactions or any experience with Mr. Ryan Moore that's going in tonight? You know, I, I, Ryan was much younger than I was, but, uh, you know, just seeing all the things he's done and I, I, I see him at a games periodically and, uh, heard a lot of great things about him, so, but not much, uh, interaction with him, so to speak. Well, we know that, like I said before, you don't miss many of these. And last year you had some terrible weather that kept you from coming. But um, you're back this year, and we're so thankful for you to come back. But why the effort to make sure that you're here at the induction ceremonies every year? Uh, you know, I, I have just so many great memories about uh, Manatee Community College, which was what they called it back in my day. And um, I think you have to kind of go back and see where you were and I, I, I think back of all the great times and not so great times I had here and uh, it makes me see how far I've come in the last 44 years and um, 
I just have always, I look forward to this. This is on my schedule every year, so. Well, we're so glad you come back. Tomorrow, uh, softball plays at 10 for our alumni. You guys play it too. Are you playing this year? Oh yeah, wouldn't miss it. Ex excellent, great to see you. Thank yeah, you so much. Hello, I'm here with Hall of Famer um, Harry Canan or Coach Canan. Coach, I was wondering if you could talk to us a little bit about what does it mean to a college to have a Hall of Fame like this? Oh, I think it's just a great added value because for one, it, it rewards young people and coaches and players who have meant a lot to the school, meant a lot to the community, and those of us that have loved uh, State College of Florida like I have, it's, it's just something that stays with you forever. And I think it spills out into the community, so I think it's just a wonderful thing and uh, I'm happy to be part of it, as are you. Absolutely, I echo that completely. Um, you've been inducted into a lot of Hall of Fames and we actually recognized you recently at one of our home basketball games. Um, what does being in this Hall of Fame mean to you? Well, I think this is the, really the key one because this is the one that spins off all the others. Everything that I did in coaching really for which I received any fame uh, or notoriety was at uh, then MCC, now State College of Florida. So this has a special place in my heart because of the fact that this is a place I was the head coach 19 years and uh, have great, great love for the school and the people that are at the school. That's right, and back then we had standing room only in the gym, and I know Coach Washington's going to get it back there that way. I have no doubt. He played for me. He's a wonderful young man, and I think the program is headed in the right direction, no doubt. We agree. Thanks, Coach Kenan. Enjoy your evening. I will. Thank you. Thanks. Good luck to you in softball season. Thank you. We kick off next Friday. Hi, I'm here with George Sanders, former athletic director from MCC in that time, and um, he was, actually went in the first class for the SCF Hall of Fame. So George, I'd like to hear, um, what does it mean to you to have a Hall of Fame such as this still continuing to grow and, and have wonderful inductees every year? Well, the, the opportunity to recognize the people who set the groundwork, who, whose achievements and who established the tradition that we've all been a part of uh, was really important to myself and to one of tonight's inductees who helped get this thing started, Ryan Moore. And that opportunity to go back and recognize those people has been huge. Uh, the tradition here is almost 50 years old. Uh, we have been blessed by the greatness of the athletes that have been here, the administrators, the coaches, uh, and, and, and so on and down the line that and, and not to recognize those people for their accomplishments would have been a travesty. So the opportunity to start that in 2006 was a big deal. Uh, this is 2014, so this seventh class, eighth year, but seventh class, uh, and it's been able to go back and into the memory and to bring those people back forward, to put them in front of their colleagues and to let them know how much they're appreciated. Because there's so many people here that are still on the table to be recognized uh, from all of our sports that it's just such a big deal and such an honor to be asked to be a part of it from my standpoint to be to be inducted originally was a blessing uh, I didn't deserve it at the time to be mentioned with the people that the Chases, the Corchecks, the Wins, the Hills uh, was overwhelming uh, it's still overwhelming to think about and to be able to come back and be a part of it is a really positive thing and something I, I want to continue to do regardless of what I'm doing Absolutely, and you do not miss a Hall of Fame, so we appreciate your effort coming back. Um, so I was wondering, do you have any uh, stories about Mr. Ryan Moore that's going in this evening that you'd like to share on camera? Actually, I've, I've said in my little brief introduction that I'm going to not share anything about Ryan because he may know something on me <laughs> that I think will be a better opportunity to keep those sleeping dogs lying and uh, because there may be a few inductees in the future who may even know even more and I don't want to start that precedent of where stories about us might be getting out but it's been a great honor it's a great opportunity to be here and to be recognized and to be part of it that's the biggest thing to me is to, to get the opportunity to be back as a part of it to get to introduce one of the inductees tonight is very special to me not only because of who the inductee is but just to be invited back and to be a part of it so that that's really special well we appreciate everything you've done for the college and especially for this event in particular so thanks George Thank great you, to Mary. see you I appreciate it dear Hello, I'm here with SCF Hall of Famer Pat Osborne, and um, Pat, I'd like to know, when you got the call, uh, when you found out you were going into the SCF Hall of Fame, what did you first think about, or was there a specific memory that came to your mind, or, or what does this mean to you? Uh, well, a lot of things. A lot of memories came flooding back. Uh, all the boys that I played with, 
Coach Wynn, uh, all of it sort of melded together. And uh, it was a terrific honor. My family was able to attend with me and uh, it meant everything to me. I understand completely. Um, did you, uh, do you know Tom Cook or do you have any stories about Mr. Cook that's going in this evening? No stories about him, but of course when I got there two years after Tom had left and gone on to Florida State, uh, there were stories about him, not off the field, on the field, oh, how good he was and how great a receiver he was, good thrower, good hitter. Uh, and then he went on to Florida State, and of course the same thing held true there. So uh, he was sort of a legend, or a little bit of a legend, and and he was one of those f sort of first ones that went sort of from the trail from Manatee Junior to Florida State. So um, since you were inducted, you have returned almost every year to this event. So we really appreciate you coming back. But why do you um, want to continue coming back? What does it mean to have this event? Well, again, I think it's the memories for me. Uh, I like to get here and just talk with David Motes. Uh, David and I go back. We played against each other uh, in pro ball. And uh, I was always one year behind David. He, for When he left here, then I came. When I went to Florida State, he had signed professionally. And I always had wanted to play on the same team with David. He was a really uh, serious-minded uh, a lot of us, and me included probably, uh, didn't take it quite as seriously as we should have. But I always thought, oh, I would have liked to have hung around David more and had more of the serious side. Yeah. Um, Florida State national champs, and we've got a big Florida State um, pipeline from uh, MCC, MJC baseball up to Florida State. So uh, go Knowles, right? Go Knowles. Uh, Auburn was a great competition. I mean, they could have just as easily won that game but uh, I was glad we pulled it out. Well, Pat, I've known you since I was really little. You and my dad were buddies, so it's so nice to see you every year. I'm so glad you come back to the event. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Pat. Hi, I'm here with one of the uh, guests of honor tonight, the 2014 Hall of Fame inductee, Mr. Tom Cook. Tom, um, why don't you walk us through the day that you got the call that you were going to go into this Hall of Fame? It was in November that uh, Matt, Matt Ennis, the uh, athletic director out there called me and uh, he advised me then that I had uh, been put in the Hall of Fame and, uh, and I, was, I, I was a little floored. I was absolutely floored, extremely excited and it's, uh, it's very humbling, very humbling. I understand. So, um, are you nervous this evening? You have to do a little speech. I, I hear that you might be a little nervous about the speaking part. Uh, speaking was not my best subject in school. <laughs> I think I'd rather be batting in the bottom of the ninth inning with two outs than, than, than giving speeches. But uh, if I can get started, I think I'll make through. Um, I hear you were quite the catcher, and I've talked to some people that played with you or years after you and s heard stories about you, so you've caught a lot of guys. Do you have any uh, specific memory or player that you remember going, gosh, this guy was good, or, or what's, what's a memory that you have from your time here or any part in your playing career? Well, uh, the guy that sticks out in my mind that played with us uh, was Stan Bell. He is on the board out. He's on the. Uh, he he played in the big leagues with Atlanta. He was tragically killed in a car accident in Atlanta. Uh, but he was without a doubt one of the best pitchers. That uh, and it, it, to me, he should be right here. He should be standing up here with you know with me. So uh, uh, a great guy. And uh, him and his wife were both killed before he ever got to pitch in the big leagues. And it's something that I've always thought of. Coach Motes and I went up to his funeral, and it was a, it was a, it was a rough situation. Wow. Well, um, what a great tribute to just have him on your mind this evening as you stand here about to go in yourself. So that's that's an amazing tribute. Um, okay. So what do you think having a Hall of Fame for a state college or a junior college? What do you think it means? What does it mean to have this this Hall of Fame? I'm tickled to death with it, and I, I hope it continues on. I uh, I hope to help support it some way, one way or the other, however that would be. 
and uh, and I'm just tickled to death that you're in it. Yeah. I think that's great. Thank you. You've done a great job with your uh, softball team. I've been watching you for years. Wow. Well, thank you. I know you live right around here, and we have some mutual friends. So it's finally it's nice to finally meet you, Mr. Cook, and congratulations. Okay. Thank you very much. Good luck. Good luck to you. Thank you. Okay. And now we're joined with our other inductee for this evening, 2014 class member, Ryan Moore. Ryan, how are you doing this evening? Fantastic. Are you a little nervous about having to speak? A little bit. Okay. Um, Ryan, you were on a state championship team here that went to the JUCO World Series. Um, you've been instrumental in getting this event up and running, and you've been such a, a strong friend to the athletic program here. What does it mean to you to be inducted this evening into the SCF Hall of Fame? Very humbling. Uh, very honored, uh, very amazing, all the adjectives above. <laughs> Pretty amazing, something special. What was the first thing that popped into your mind when you got the call? Was it a memory? Was it just, what, what happened when you got the call from Matt? Is this a joke? <laughs> yeah, don't be so humble. Well, um, what's one of your favorite memories of, I know you were a bat boy when you were, were little for one of Coach Wynn's teams and Coach, uh, you, your families are so close. What's a, a memory that just stands out from all of the years of you being around the program? Well, there's a lot of memories from state titles to World Series to being a bat boy to chasing Glenn Davis to home run balls to camping trips, state tournaments, you name it, but probably the people. You know, two guys that mean everything to my life, Coach Wynn, Coach Hill, were awesome people to be mentored by, uh, fathered by, uh, just unbelievable people. And I probably, you know, through the years got to meet people like yourself and George and Matt and, and um, all kinds of people from all walks of athletics at MCC. And so for me, it's not necessarily about one single accomplishment. For me, it's about the whole picture.